Thank you, Dr. Maria. Let me just share my slides. Can you see? Thank you, Rajiv and Shalini for having invited me to speak on this topic. NAFLD NASH, Current Guidelines and Adoption in Clinical Practice. Today, NASH is becoming, you know, NAFLD is becoming an epidemic, not only in our country, but across the world. But what is non-alcoholic fatty liver disease? It's basically an accumulation of fat in the liver in the absence of ongoing intake of significant amount of alcohol. And what is that significant amount of alcohol? A cutoff is intake of 20 grams daily. I won't go into that. Basically, NASH is a chronic progressive liver disease and it is considered the progressive type of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease. And that is characterized by accumulation of fat in the liver, which is called steatosis, which leads to inflammation and liver damage and can progress to fibrosis cirrhosis and a hepatocellular carcinoma also. NASH frequently progresses undetected because there are hardly any symptoms of the disease. And NFLD is a diagnosis of exclusion. You knock off the alcohol-induced hepatitis, drug-induced hepatitis, viral hepatitis, hepatitis B, C, etc., autoimmune hepatitis and metabolic diseases like Wilson and hemochromatosis and that leaves you with NAFLD. So what is NASH from steatosis to cirrhosis? Steatosis is more than 5% fat content in the form of triglycerides. And once you have hepatocellular injury and your enzymes begin to increase, that is what causes NASH and that can progress to cirrhosis and hepatocellular carcinoma. How does, how do NFLD really occur? We aren't exactly sure. But a two-hit hypothesis is there. The first hit was that the accumulation of triglycerides in the liver leading to steatosis caused by systemic insulin resistance. The second hit was thought to be a consequence of long-term storage of triglycerides that results in hepatic oxidative stress and damage to the hepatocyte. This paradigm of perpetual chronic injury would be established leading to eventual fibrosis, cirrhosis, or a hepatocellular carcinoma. Subsequent studies have revealed that hyperinsulinemia, that is insulin resistance, the first hit does indeed precede the development of fatty liver in diabetics. And to the extent today that if you see a fatty liver in a non-diabetic, you could assume that he is a pre-diabetic. The general rule seems to be that fatty liver is closely associated with insulin resistance. And there seems to be very few exceptions to this. Such exceptions featuring a dissociation of insulin resistance from fatty liver is specific genetic conditions affecting lipid metabolism, especially familial heterozygous hypobeta lipoproteinemia or patients with HCV. So multiple insults, the second is multiple insults acting together on genetically predisposed patients is insulin resistance, metabolic syndrome, obesity, diabetes, dyslipidemia, altered gut bacteria, inflammatory cytokines, and currently this is the most accepted understanding of NAFLD. So you have the first hypothesis that insulin resistance metabolic syndrome causes steatosis, and then you have the oxidative stress, mitochondrial dense function, inflammatory cytokine, which leads to the progression to NASH and cirrhosis. So the basic defect in the development of hepatitis steatosis is is the imbalance between import and export of fat to and from the liver. Insulin resistance with and without full-blown metabolic syndrome is the central mechanism for hepatic steos to the patient with NAFLD. Now, this in turn develops in a setting of inappropriate diet, sedentary lifestyle, obesity, centrally special visceral obesity, and advancing age. How do we really treat NAFLD? You have lifestyle modification, you have insulin sensitizers, you have antioxidants. But as of today, there is no US FDA approved drug for the treatment of NAFLD. But there are a lot of clinical trials with different molecules. If you look at this, this is a 2018 guideline from AASL. 
Pyrimidazone improves liver histology in patients with and without type 2 diabetes with biopsy proven NASH. Therefore, it may be used to treat this patient, but risk and benefit should be discussed with each patient before starting therapy because this was the time when everybody was talking about the possibility of pyoglitazone and bladder cancer. So this cautionary statement there. Then you have in 2016, ASL, ESD recommendation, pyoglitazone, most efficacious data, but off-label outside type 2 diabetes or vitamin E, better safety and tolerability, or their combination could be used in NASH. Then this was recent in the Journal of Internal Medicine, which is in August 2022, current treatment of non-alcoholic fatty liver disease, you know, diet, exercise, weight loss, yes, but when you talk of pharmacological treatment, pyoglitazone in patients with biopsy proven NASH, 30 to 45 milligram, vitamin E can be given in NASH in patients without cirrhosis, 800 IU per day. If you look at the randomized controlled trials, in different situations of fatty liver. And all the drugs they have analyzed, if you look at resolution of NASH, you have elafibrinol, elafibrinol 120 milligram, obitocolic acid, diraglutide, vitamin E, pyoglitazone 30 and 45. It shows very nice results, best results with pyoglitazone. In resolution of NASH, liraglutide has also shown a decent thing. When you talk of NAFLD score, it is the pyoglitazone which comes up. Steatosis, again, the pyoglitazone comes up. Lobular inflammation reduction, pyoglitazone comes up. Ballooning, though the effect is less across the board, but the best results are seen with the pyoglitazone. And in fibrosis also, generally fibrosis doesn't reverse with most of these drugs, but these studies have shown that there is a slight improvement in fibrosis also. These are histological response in patients with pre-diabetes versus type 2 diabetes. Now, this we are looking at pre-diabetes and NFLD score. In pre-diabetes, pyoglitazone has done wonders. In type 2 diabetes also, it does the same. Resolution of NASH in pre-diabetes. So, basically, we are talking of pre-diabetes. Diabetes comes later. And if you look at the scores of ballooning fibrosis in patients with pre-diabetes and type 2, Steatosis in both pre-diabetes and diabetes comes down, ballooning, inflammation, fibrosis, all improve. Now, in May 2022, the ACE came out with guidelines for NAFLD. And what are the key highlights of these guidelines? So, screen patients at high risk for NAFLD and advanced fibrosis in the presence of certain markers, especially if the patient is obese, pre-diabetic or has type 2 diabetic or has metabolic syndrome, Hepatic steatosis on imaging or elevated liver enzymes for greater than six months. So those need screening. And you can screen the patient using a fibrosis 4 or a FIB4 test, which is a non-invasive test wherein you just look at the patient's age, you look at the liver enzymes, the SGOT, SGPT, and do the platelet count, and you can get a FIB4 score. And in fact, uh, in my clinic, we are just doing a Study, we have just completed a study doing fibro scan in over 2,000 patients. Every patient who walked in had a fibro scan, and we have got the FIF4 and the APRI score and all, which is ingrained into my system. Automatically, it will give us the figures there. Now, if you have an individual who has very high liver enzymes, hepatic steatosis, or evidence of advanced liver disease, it should be sent for a specialist evaluation. These are the key highlights of ACE guidelines. You have to counsel lifestyle modification, including weight loss for every individual with obesity and NFLD. The other is talking about the medications. What do they recommend? Using pyoglitazone or GLP-1 receptor agonist for those with NASH and type 2 diabetes. Consider weight management. Semiglutide and liraglutide has been shown to have effect. SGLT2 also does have weight reduction there. Consider bariatric surgery for individuals with a BMI above 35 and NAFLD. Evaluate for presence and severity of NASH in patients considering bariatric surgery. Screen children and adolescents with type 2 diabetes for NFLD using age-appropriate liver enzyme tests. So basically, timely diagnosis and management of NAFLD and its complications is essential. 
studies show presence of liver fibrosis worsens morbidity and mortality with nfld and associated complication this include higher risk of hepatocellular carcinoma many patients with type 2 diabetes have underlying risk factors but remain undiagnosed so there has to be a proper screening but if you look at patients with type 2 diabetes have a extremely high risk of nfld up to 90% of type 2 diabetics have a non alcoholic fatty liver disease and i think these figures are coming out in our study which have just completed we have to analyze the data but 90% have a alcoholic non alcoholic fatty liver disease of this 37% have nash and 20% of the patients have a significant fibrosis which is corroborated by a fibro scan and a fib4 score so clinical takeaway is raising the awareness of nfld is there today nobody really looks at non alcoholic fatty liver in that sense many a times routine sonography shows us that there is a fatty liver most of the clinicians tend to ignore it take it take it that that awareness has to come that this is a serious matter which we have to really look at now this is the ace guideline which came out on 1st may 2022 what medications are proven to be effective in treatment of nfld or nash it says pioglitazone and glp1 receptor agonist are recommended for type 2 diabetes and biopsy proven nash that's a grade 1 recommendation clinician must consider treating diabetes with pioglitazone and glp1 when there is a elevated probability of having nash based on elevated plasma amino transferase to offer cardio metabolic benefits type 2 diabetes must consider glp1 pioglitazone or sglt2 inhibitors so basic play is around pioglitazone glp1 and an sglt2 the glp1 and sglt2 cause a significant weight loss which contributes to reducing insulin resistance and helps in the process of alleviating nash so management of NAFLD again this is the ACE recommendation fibrosis risk stratification whether low risk intermediate risk or high risk preferred diabetic pharmacology pharmacotherapy consider agents that reduce liver fat pioglitazone glp1 sglt2 indeterminate it is the same thing high risk again pioglitazone glp1 and as far as there is no efficacy data on cirrhosis now we have a drug which is an indian drug sarvoglitazar which has been approved first drug to be really approved for nafld or nash so drug control of india has approved zydesis sarvoglitazar for non cirrhotic non alcoholic steatoid hepatitis making this the first drug approved for this indication anywhere in the world the approval of sarvoglitazar was based upon the results of the evidence 1 2 and 4 studies and in the phase 2 evidence study evidence one the drug demonstrated an improvement in liver enzymes and lipids in patients with non alcoholic fatty liver disease a preliminary stage of nash basically sarvoglitazar is a dual ppar gamma agonist it has in fact the ppar gamma works just like pioglitazon more or less comparable results i have looked at the data there and it also has a effect on ppar alpha thereby reducing the triglyceride content so obviously reducing insulin resistance reducing the triglyceride could have a positive effect on the liver pathology evidence 2 was a phase 3 study where sarvoglitazar was compared to placebo in indian patients which evaluated the histological improvement of nash during a liver biopsy after 52 weeks of trans treatment sarvoglitazar met both its primary and secondary endpoints since it reduced liver fat liver enzyme and disease activity now we are looking at a evolving scenario and today since us no us fd approved treatment exists to date recent guidelines recommend only lifestyle intervention bariatric surgery if bmi is more than 35 and there is evidence of nash glp1 receptor agonist ppar gamma that is a pioglitazone and sglt2 for its weight reduction there is a new and novel medication for the treatment of type 2 diabetes terzepatide which is a dol glp gip and glp1 receptor agonist 
which has been approved by FDA, US FDA, only one week after the ACE guidelines were published. And ongoing clinical trials demonstrate promising results, not only for type 2 diabetes, but for body weight and steatosis. And if you look at this, the ACE guideline was published on 1st May 2022, and on 13th May, terzapatide was approved. This is the SERPAS trials where HbA1c comes down, significant weight reduction comes down, CV safety submit trial is on the way, but effect on NAFLD and NASH SERPAS 3, ter terzapatide significantly reduces liver fat content and maybe reduces the prognosis, uh, progression of fibrosis. So reconsideration of the current recommendation of NAFLD treatment to include this novel agent would offer effective treatment for NFLD among diabetic patients should be seriously contemplated in the future. In fact, this molecule may replace GLP-1 totally in the near future. What is the Indian scenario? We are thin fat Indians with more fat and less muscle. Data from India support higher prevalence of insulin resistance in patients with NFLD and almost 83 to 98 percent of the patients with NFLD are insulin resistant. Now, Different uh, studies have shown that higher insulin resistance and high, higher tri hepatic triglycerides are there in Indians compared to other races. This is Peterson's study who measured hepatic triglyceride content and plasma interleukin concentration in different ethnic groups. And they found that the hepatic triglyceride content and plasma interleukin-6 concentration are nearly twofold higher in Asian Indians as compared to the white Caucasians. The increase in hepatic triglyceride ile is associated with a higher prevalence of insulin resistance in Asian Indians. So Peterson also looked at the prevalence of various metabolic risk factors among different races. And in spite of lower BMI, Asian Indians have the highest level of fasting serum insulin and insulin resistance in compared with other ethnic populations. So the NFLD seen in India, it is important to note that all the association of NAFLD, that is excess body fat, abdominal obesity, diabetes, hypertriglyceridemia, are in, and insulin resistance are highly prevalent in the urban Asian Indians and may be important for pathogenesis of NAFLD. So it is reasonable to pre presume that NAFLD would also have a very high prevalence in India. However, this data is scarce. So what would be our take today? What, I mean, see, basically, pyogetogone therapy seems to be an effective treatment for NASH. Any treatment that reduces insulin resistance is going to benefit NASH. Type 2 TZD needs to be given indefinitely. Given its propensity for weight gain, a combination with SGLT2 will neutralize that weight gain. So if you combine an SGLT2 with a pyoglitazone, you have the benefits of pyoglitazone minus the weight gain. And it can be considered one of the preferred agents in diabetic patients with NASH. So to conclude, Indians have the highest prevalence of insulin resistance. Diabetes and CBD start much earlier in Indians than compared to other ethnic groups. Insulin resistance plays a pivotal role in the development of NAFLD cardiovascular disease and stroke, treating insulin resistance aggressively as early as possible is a sure the key to prevention and treatment of NAFLD. Thank you very much, ladies and gentlemen.